Okay, guys. <clears throat> I'm having a rough day, and it's yet morning. I'm having a very rough day. I'm going to walk you through it before we dive into the next game I intend to play for the YouTube channel, um, which you can clearly see on your screen, incidentally. Um, the day started at 4 a.m. I woke up. My wife, coincidentally, woke up with me, which never happens. I get up way before she does. She woke up at 4 a.m. too. She said, I'm awake. Let's get out of bed. So I said, okay. I got up. She stayed in bed. I went back to check her a little bit later. She was back asleep with the cats. Um, so she slept for another six hours while I was up and about. So that was another best start to the day, but so be it. I had a lot of time to play XCOM 2 War of the Chosen, for which I had already recorded 25 videos. No, not 25. 20. 20 even. Videos. Totaling about 25 hours in, uh, in gameplay. I was playing in Iron Man mode, which means the game saves automatically, constantly, you can't take back turns. Unfortunately, at the uh, end of one such save, or the start of one such save, or something, the game froze, it crashed. And when I came back in, the save game was no more. Um, so that entire gameplay session was lost. 25 hours of gaming down the drain. Uh, I'm going to start over and do a new series with you now. But to finish my story of my bad morning, when I went to find out if there was any way to fix that, and there isn't, I also checked my email and found out there was something I really wanted, a, a part I was on hold on, for, for a, a Netflix series, and uh, it came down to me and one other person, and I found it this morning and went to the other person. So a little bit of a heartbreaking morning in, in total, and I'm sleep deprived. But, here we go. Um, the last thing you probably saw uploaded then was, uh, I was playing a little bit of Everspace, which is a very cool game, it's very roguelike-y, but, um... I can't imagine it's fun to watch because it's very chaotic in its visuals. If I'm wrong, if you really want to see more of it, let me know and I'll, I'll certainly dive back in. But for the time being, I, I wasn't like, I wasn't as in love with it as I expected to be. And uh, if on top of that, you're not going to want to watch it, what's, what's the point? This is much more traditionally akin to the other stuff we would normally have on this channel. Again, I'd be back on the PC doing traditional roguelikes right now. I just can't risk it right now. My, my arms are still surprisingly uh, injured. Um, and until they fully heal, I just can't do it. But this is kind of roguelike-ish. Um, it is turn-based. It has movement on a grid. Uh, it has permadeath. You have characters that level up. Um, it has procedural generation of most of the maps. Um, with all that in combined, it's very roguelike-esque. But uh, it is, you do control multiple characters, and there is some strategic elements to it as well, so it's not fully a, a roguelike by any means. I guess we're diving into a new game. Here we go. Autosave's been enabled. Autosave is the bane of my existence. Let's go with Commander. The second hardest difficulty, Legend, I think, would be probably out of my reach, and I might as well at least try to win this while you watch. I can't guarantee it. I'm not that great of a player. We don't want the tutorial. We don't want anything else. I'm going to be skipping the uh, first set of cutscenes, by the way. Let's not enable Iron Man, because last time it f completely fucking corrupted our save game. So, uh, we'll, we'll play as if Iron Man was on. We'll save it ourselves every period, every once in a while, but, uh, and I won't you know, ever reload to get a better outcome, but we can't play with that on. And all this is good. Like I said, I'm going to skip the first set of cutscenes because it's about 10 minutes of cutscenes. They're cool, but with the morning I've had, I don't want to sit through them again. Excitement. So we're diving right into the first mission. Um, now to give you a lowdown as to what the game is in case you're new to XCOM, this is a sequel by the way, XCOM 2 of course. In the uh, original game, Aliens the Invaded aliens Earth, a military force called XCOM. I'll talk after this dude stops talking. Time we move in and show them the fight isn't over yet. We're deploying to hit a high-profile target, one that they won't be able to cover up so easily. Move to secure the target site and eliminate any hostile contacts in the area. A scientific slash military uh, force called XCOM was put together to defeat them. If you were successful in that game, great, you defeated them. But the conceit of this game is that. Uh, essentially got a peace treaty with them. They inhabited Earth and agreed to share technology, etc. with humans, but they have a secret agenda that's going on. And XCOM exists yet, uh, fighting from behind the scenes as resistance fighters. You yourself were captured 20 years ago, and in the cutscenes and the tutorial, if you were to play it, you are rescued. Uh, you were hooked up to some sort of VR thing where they were learning shit from your brain, and you were unconscious that whole time. Here we go. Now, like all missions in this game, uh, most missions in this game. This map is procedurally generated, you don't, don't know what to expect, but the first mission of the game, if you skip the tutorial, is always the same. You always have to blow up this monument. And you're always facing, you know, a given, rough given number of soldiers, etc. 
and you're always in a similar terrain, in a sort of city environment. We have a fix on the target. Move to place the X4 charges at the designated position. So our official mission is to blow that thing up, but we also have to kill all the enemies on the map. Um, there's no point in blowing it up before we've done that, because if we kill all the enemies, we can just basically blow it up at our leisure. Um, now you can see the sort of blue outline around the outside of the screen here. That indicates we started the game in concealment, the mission in concealment. The enemy literally doesn't even know we're on the map yet. Um, so as long as we don't get spotted, or open fire on them, or do something stupid like that, they won't know we're here. Or blow up the monument, of course, that would do it. Um, you can also see this little uh, movement thing I can move around. You'll see yellow out here, blue here. In this version of XCOM, or at least the, uh, the Xbox versions of XCOM, the modern versions of XCOM, you basically have two actions uh, per soldier. Um, you can use those actions to fire, you can use them to move. Um, if I was to move to here, that would use one action. If I move anywhere in the yellow, that uses both actions. So I could move as far as I want in the blue, see what's what, and then keep moving. I could move as far as I want in the blue, and then open fire, etc. If you do open fire, however, or throw a grenade or something, whether that's your first action or not, that ends your turn. The last thing you need to know before we move on is that these little icons indicate that if you're in that square, you have partial cover from that direction. If we are here, say, with the full shield, you have full cover from that direction. Full cover does not protect you completely. It just means you're much less likely to get hurt or shot. Let's move up Roger along that. here and see what we can see. For this first mission, my usual tactic is to stick to the rooftops because having a height advantage does help you hit targets. Here we can see some enemies right there. You're near the target position. I guess we haven't officially seen them, but I saw them. I'm sure you did too. Double time. Running. Let's do this. Now the enemies will move around, um, so we got to. Uh, I'd like to take them out while we know where they are. Closing on target position now. It was not bad. Okay, here we go. Oh, they freaking saw us! Unfortunately, we moved right into their. <laughs> fuck, that's terrible. Moved right into their red square that they had there. But their obedience makes them predictable. The advent officers seem more capable than the grunts. We're not sure whether to chalk it up to training or mind control. <laughs> Alright, so, the ideal opening to this game... <laughs> oh, what a bad morning. So the ideal opening to this game, you position your soldiers <laughs> in cover, you get three of them aiming at the enemies, ready to fire as soon as the first person starts the ambush. Unfortunately, although we couldn't see it, the enemies had a little area here that they could see, and we moved into it. Which means they saw us. That's terrible luck. What is even worse luck is there are two groups of enemies on this map, and this group of enemies just happened to be over here, and it saw us as well. So I can tell you right now, this is going to be a massacre. This game's going to end in slaughter. I'm going to play it out anyway. But um, when we lose this first mission, I will probably just start the damn game over, because there's no point starting from a, such a terrible position. Um, I might as well at least open fire. Take one of them out anyway. Had an 87% chance to hit him. Killed him. Let's see what these people can see from where they are. 65% chance to hit that guy. We will do 3 to 5 damage, which means we'll probably kill him, but maybe not. 51% chance to hit that guy. Uh, can we get anybody up here to get this guy who's really going to flank us? He's the, he's the main person we have to worry about. Given we're about to die anyway, probably. I'm going to move this guy up here. And fire at him. That gives me a flanking shot at him. I can probably and hopefully kill him. If I miss, I'm exposed, but it doesn't really matter because this guy's already exposed to his fire, so fuck it. Let's go for broke here. If we can pull a win out of this, I'll be uh, highly entertained. Worst start ever. Now you can see at the bottom there, by the way, the yellow head versus the red head. Red head being this. Red head means it still has some sort of cover. 74% chance to hit. If we hit it, we'll probably kill it. Get it of course we didn't hit. <laughs> because it's today. Alright, um... Other options. Could... And we're somewhat under cover. We're not under great cover. We could move over here. No, let's move him to here. Moving on target location. 
for chucking a grenade up here. Yeah, and taking out the guy who has a flanking shot at me is the most important part of this. Fire in the hole. This may break the floor beneath him and drop him. If it doesn't, it may kill him, of course. Didn't kill him, but it did... Did it kill him? Maybe it killed him. Excellent. Okay, one less. Is he dead? Yeah, I guess we killed him. Alright. So we have right now a 66% chance of hitting there. Let's move up here where we have Understood. perhaps a better Moving shot. 68%, 52%, 50, 46. Could also throw another grenade. I mean, it worked that time, but uh, the grenades do 3 to 4 damage. This is 3 to 5. It's more likely to kill him if we do hit. Let's just try this. 68% chance the odds should be in our favor there. He's dead. Hostile neutralized. Two down, four to go. Oh, we got lucky there. Oh, we didn't hit him. But he didn't kill him, so it's still lucky, I guess. This is a trooper commander, they're not the uh, usual kind. He used his turn to mark somebody and then fired him. The mark means everybody else has an easier time hitting him, but thankfully he missed, so... Again, this is going better than, it sh than we have a right to hope for yet. Yeah, definitely going better than we have a right to hope for. Alright, he's still got a grenade. Can we get a grenade down here and take both of them out? Is that possible? Or just one? Either or situation? Fuck it. Let's grenade him and hope for the best. I probably should have moved that guy because um, he is marked. I should have got him to safety, but I didn't. Understood. So Moving life out. goes on. 83% chance to hit. There's only one left we can see. Is that only one left period? Have we gotten them all? Again, we might somehow pull a win out of this. I'll be fucking jazzed and surprised. This guy's probably going to die because the commander will probably fire at him and should likely hit. And if he gets hit again, he's definitely dead. <sighs> Move him to here. Her to here, sorry. Once again... Not taking any chances. Hit him at least with this. Grenade out. That might take out the cover that he's behind. That might let my last guy shoot. As right, so we hurt him. He's not under cover anymore. We can move this guy as close as we can. I can't see him from where I am. I don't know if I can see him from here or not. From here I probably could. Here I probably could. I'd be standing right in the open, but to be honest, being in the open might distract it from shooting at this girl who's already hurt. Let's give it a try. Let's go to here. Oh, I'm already hurt too, of course. Not too late now. Can't see him anyway. So, <clears throat> down we go. Moving to designated coordinates. One of them will probably die this time, but if we lose one person in this shitty beginning, that's still pretty good. We might get lucky, you never know. Come on, miss. No. Blew her ponytail off. Alright. On the bright side. We got this guy. Eighty-five percent. Done. Taken care of. Area is secure. We're not picking up any inbound contacts. Scanners are That did not go great, but it sure could have gone worse. So fuck it. Responds. Call it a win. We need to get those charges planted on the double. I'm gonna pass everybody else's turn. In fact, I should have just ended the turn. Alright. Plant these charges and we are out of here. We didn't find anything. Often you can find like um Modifications weapon five. mods on these bodies. At the extraction point. Didn't happen. <clears throat> Status confirmed. Squad is clear. Detonating charge. <laughs> Posturously bad luck beginning. Okay. Let's continue on.
Advent Gene Therapy Clinics will be closed tomorrow for equipment upgrades. Initial reports that the suspension of services were the result of dissident activity have been dismissed as radical propaganda. So these three will be online for some promotions, I hope. Uh, at least two of them will be. I'm not sure the third one got promoted or not. We'll find out in a second. All right, we got three promotions out of that. Let's memorialize her as just a... She got two kills, too, good for her. Commander, this is a throwback memory a of our tool. first girl who died. Propaganda machine. I say Honor her sacrifice. Them. By spreading the word of our soldiers' exploits in combat, we can bolster morale throughout the resistance. And that last little bit about bolstering morale is not true. Doing this doesn't bolster morale in any way. But it does... Um, these f posters do show up sometimes. I'm trying to take the photo. It won't let me yet. For some reason. I'm trying to... There we go, finally. Okay. Um, these posters do, however, show up in um, on walls and stuff in-game. You can find them in, in settlements and such. It's kind of interesting to see your old photos show up. Alright, when you promote somebody from Rookie, which is the lowest rank, to Squatty, which is the second level rank, you don't get to pick what way they evolve. It randomly picks it for you or... In the case of the first mission, it's not random. There'll be one of each type of uh, soldiers, four different classes. Of course, one of them we're not promoting, so we don't know which class that was, but uh, the rest of these will be one of the four classes. Serving as our demolitions experts, the Grenadiers provide heavy ordnance delivery whenever and wherever we need it. So those guys have a machine gun and a grenade launcher. The grenade launcher, of course, can shoot further than throwing a grenade. And I think you can carry two grenades for it as well. This guy, what's he become? The Ranger serves as our primary reconnaissance unit, capable of moving independently in concealment while engaging enemies at close range. So the Rangers can use a shotgun or the assault rifle that they started with. They can also use the sword, as you saw, with a new ability called Slash. And the last girl. Just like it sounds, our Sniper. sharpshooters engage Sharpshooter. enemy targets with pinpoint accuracy from extreme range. They're also trained in pistol marksmanship for the occasional close encounter. So sniper rifle and a pistol. No other abilities at this point. Oh, it's just squad sight. You can target enemies within squad mate's sight, provided there's no there is a line of sight to the target. So even if the target is out of our range to see, if one of our other classmates or classmates, squad mates sees it. Um, we can target it, provided there's nothing obstructing our line of sight. Now, this being the first mission, um, I'll warn you in advance. There's gonna be a few cutscenes we got to get through because I don't want to. I don't want to cut them all off for you. It'd make the if you're watching on YouTube later or something, it'll make the game kind of uh, lifeless. So we'll see a bit of the story. We did recover some stuff from that. We have five Advent Trooper corpses and one Advent Officer corpse. Um, just to let you know again, during the uh, earlier cutscenes, you would have found out Advent are actually humans that have been genetically modified by the aliens. So we are fighting a sort of human, but they're hybrids. We can use those corpses for research later. Let's go to the Commander, research lab. To the research labs. Impressive, isn't it? Capable of generating immense power. You're completely harmless to human life. If only the same could be said for the rest of the aliens' technology. Commander, Dr. Richard Tigan, Chief Science Officer. I am responsible for the entirety of our research here, as well as the procedure you so recently underwent. Welcome to my lab, such as it is. I'm not sure what Central may have told you, but we found something while removing you from the alien stasis suit. A device implanted directly in your occipital lobe. Had I access to the equipment available to me during my tenure at Advent, I would already know the precise nature of its function. However, in your approval, of course, Commander, I assure you, I will find out. Which brings to light an additional point. Though aspects of this facility are indeed impressive, I am but one man. Were you to direct additional support personnel and resources to me, I could substantially improve the speed of all our research. 
A farewell, Commander. So there we go, Dr. Tigan, the one and only scientist we have working for us right now. He obviously wants us to get more scientists to make the research go faster. But for now, it's just him. Let's give him something to research. Now we can choose any of these things. You can see right here on the right how long it will take. Three days. Modular weapons would allow us to start attaching weapon mods that we find to our weapon. We, usually you'd find one or two during the first mission. Again, it was just not exactly bad luck. We blew a bunch of guys up with grenades. If you kill someone with explosives, there's no chance they'll drop a weapon mod. Um, but that would be Search. This would require two trooper corpses, which we have. Also take three days. Would allow us to start um, building uh, an, sort of an underlay for our armor. It would increase their soldiers who wear it. This is important for the plot. You need eventually to move forward and open new lines of research. And these are these were added with DLC. There's four or five special weapons you can research that we've coincidentally found. Um, but until we have a a facility called a proving ground, we won't be able to actually manufacture or, or gain the ability to use the weapons even if we research it. So there's no point in doing that right now. I'm going to go with modular weapons so that hopefully we can start getting better weaponry in the field as soon as we can. I do find that area of research to be among the more intriguing options available. And work immediately. I'll send word when a complete now, report is available. Let's go to engineering next, I guess. Engineering. Okay. Reworked your repulsors with some of the parts from their old engine. Should fix that stabilization problem. Come on, Rover. It'll work. Commander! Getting our tech to talk to theirs is harder than you'd think. Lily Shen, Chief Engineer. At your service. You are probably expecting to see my father. In all that's happened, I'm guessing Central didn't tell you yet. He's gone. Dad gave everything he had to get us this far. This entire ship is his life's work. I know he would have loved to show you around the place himself. He used to talk to you a lot. You can be sure I'm what he started. Might not look it. But from here, I can fabricate pretty much anything you come up with. And with a little more help, well, you'd be amazed with what I can do. It was an honor to meet you, Commander. So as you may have gathered, that's the daughter of the uh, engineering dude from the first game, which I probably should have started with in retrospect. But... From here, what we, one of the things we can do is build new items. We you only have a few available to us at the start. Some of these things can make in combat, Commander. With a few Flashbang supplies, grenade would um, disorient enemies in no time. that get hit with it, uh, making them easier to hit, making them have a rougher time hitting, giving them less movement points, etc. This is very valuable. It allows us to heal people, and this a smoke grenade would give a defensive boost to people. Now, you, at the start of the game, at the very least, your people can only carry into battle with them. Um, by default, that's the grenades we were using in the first mission. So even if we give somebody this or, or this, it replaces their default grenades. So the one thing I'm going to build from that, other than that, I won't build anything right now. Let's back out of here. could have saved a lot of time repairing the ship's systems if we had any idea how to translate their language. Unfortunately, we if you haven't come across any I, hate, I hate having here. to talk over these people who just talk. They're, they're interesting and fun to listen to, but um, when I'm trying to narrate it, it's kind of weird. Anyways, if you haven't grasped it yet, we are in a stolen advent ship um, that we barely got up and running right now. Like As you can see, Before it's cluttered war, with a lot of debris and old machinery. Now, they're gonna have to pick things up on now we fly. cannot start building a new facility yet, I don't think. There's can we? We can. Okay, let's do that right bat. We'll start building a guerrilla tactics school. But we'll need more engineers to clear up space for construction first. I know, Shin. Um, this will allow us to start learning some new tactics for our soldiers. It'll take a while to 14 days for a note, so Shen will be single-handedly trying to put this together. You can also see it requires 85 supplies. We currently have 140. That's the currency in the game. It will also absorb 3 power from our ship. We're using 6, we only have 15 to go, so after this we only have uh, 6 left. We'll start work on the but right let's get Shen connected. building that. I'll send word when it's up and running. There's nothing else for us to build here, so let's go to the hangar. Commander, good to see you on your feet again. Welcome to the bridge. The nerve center Bridge. of our operation. The aliens have our entire world in their grip. 
Advent controls everything. Government, communications, <clears throat> industry. Not to mention the military. And it's on us to take it all back. Resources and time are tight, Commander. It'll be up to you to decide how to best use both. The ship is yours. Commander. There are some other aspects of the ship that I'll show you in a bit. Local resistance faction known as the Reapers. These people like to keep a very low profile, so it may take some time before we hear back. While we're waiting, it might be worthwhile to scan the area for additional supplies and resources. You never know what we may find out there. Commander, one of our resistance contacts just tipped us off to a site that may be worth investigating. So if you didn't see, we, we control one area of the world right now called the New Arctic. Um, it is giving it... Each area you control gives you a set number of supplies at the start of every month in a supply drop. Um, so that area, as of right now, will give us 150 supplies per month. We're going to want to expand that later, though. Um, in the meantime, we can fly our big-ass ship around and go investigate various things. Right now, the only thing to investigate is this. Um, there's some potential rookies for us to recruit to our team. It's going to take us five days to investigate. Let's fly over there and do that. Commander, the Avengers remote scanning capabilities will help us search the area for clues or other resources. It's going to take some time, right. though. We've got a lot of ground to cover. I am sure you will find the so, results to be as intriguing <laughs> as I do, Commander. We did finish the research into modular weapons, which means if we had any weapon mods, we could now attach them. But when we find them, at least we'll be ready for it. Um, that will also open up new research lines, including magnetic weapons, which I really do want to research, but let's see what else is available first. Commander, yeah. the science team has grown particularly <sighs> interested in this field of research. So much so, that their inspiration could lead to vast improvements in our research efficiency. However, we must act fast. Despite their brilliance, they are a fickle group. So it's cool. If we were to research experimental weapons right now, research faster than it was supposed to. It was supposed to take 10 days. It would probably take like 8 days if we look at it. Let's take a look and see how long it'll take. I doubt I'll research it right now, though, anyway. Yeah, 8 days instead. So it's 20% faster. That said, again, it's going to be a long time before this is going to benefit us. So even though there's a, a bonus to research it now, I'm going to suggest we, uh, we skip it. Let's move on to hybrid materials. I foresee a number of valuable applications stemming from this. And because we're out here, I'll just quickly show you around the rest of the ship. Most of it you don't ever use. From here, you can see um, some sort of history and that sort of thing of the game if you wanted to. Learn some different stuff. Uh, it gives you a report of you know, where all your energy, etc. is going. What you're working on. Um, and any current objectives, of which we have none. I never come up here, though. The living quarters. Of our soldiers, the living quarters on board the Avenger are a step up from the conditions they've had to live with on the ground. Um, not much to see here, but you can see your personality. You can see what your people are like, etc. You can see this one's gravely wounded. She's gonna be out of action for 13, or he's gonna be out of action for 13 days. The rest of them are available. They do each have individual histories if you want to look at them, but those histories have no bearing. There's like flavor text. Um, the only other place to see, I think, is the bar. Which again doesn't really what's this down here? Nothing. Doesn't really have any major purpose, but I'll show it to you. We've done what we can to honor our fallen soldiers, Commander. It's not much, but it gives our people a chance to pay their respects. Advent propaganda continues to spread the message of dissident attacks, but this is the voice of the resistance telling you not to believe their lies. Our fighters are giving it everything they've got to take back what is rightfully ours. So one of the things you can do in here is look at your fallen soldiers. We lost in the first mission. Tells you how she died, etc. Um, there's also every time you come in here a radio and some snippets of news, but again they're purely flavor. Back there. All right, let's get back to the uh, task at hand, which is um, back out here. All right. Remnants of an incomplete Advent settlement were found throughout the area. Abandoned before finishing construction on the project, our scans located a small resistance cell nearby, responsible for the sabotage, and when approached, they expressed interest in joining XCOM. So we got three new rookies to our team. Not bad. Joe Long, rookie Igor Kuznetsov, and rookie Natalia Zinchenko. 
Uh, once again, it puts something else on the map that we hadn't seen before. I think it's the only thing on the map right now, so we might as well go look at it. Avenger plotting it takes seven days course. to scan this place. We'll get supplies out of it if we succeed, though. Or when we succeed. Uh, and in the process. Indefinitely. As the resistance continues to grow, we'll have a better chance of finding things to strike back. As it is, we've already identified a potential to disrupt the aliens' operations in this our window of opportunity is limited, so we'll have to move fast. Alright, so we do have a, a mission we can run right now. Only one, but we might as well do it. This is called Operation Frost Shriek. We have to destroy an alien relay. It is difficulty easy, as they all will be at the start of the game. They'll get progressively harder. And if we succeed, we'll be rewarded with an engineer, Catalina Ramos. Let's definitely do this. Setting course for the Arctic. We can come back and find those supplies later. It'll pick up where we left Now, at the start of a new mission, for you, your four best soldiers who are not currently tired, or injured, etc. Obviously, we have the three from the. That's not true. One of them's uh, in the sick bay. So we have two new rookies, and we have these two guys. There's nothing we can really equip them with right now, aside from the med kit. I'll give it to one guy just to, uh, just in case one of our guys gets hurt. It only has one use right now. One use might save a life. Let's go. The rookies can't use anything other than assault rifle. We could have swapped the uh, shotgun for an assault rifle on our uh, Ranger if we wanted to, but I don't want it. In position for deployment. We're picking up a steady stream of communications in alien combat advent network from this region. We have to take advantage of every opportunity to disrupt the aliens' progress on their latest operation. So we're moving in to destroy the relay before they complete the transfer. Don't leave any hostiles standing. So we're underground for this one, under the, in the tunnels under Beijing. Never like fighting underground, I don't know why, it doesn't really necessarily make a difference in the, in the layout of the, uh, the terrain's a little different the walls in all directions. No trees or bushes to hide behind. So once again, we start... You can see, this is the thing we have to destroy way over here. And we have only seven turns to do it at present. There might be ways to um, extend that time. It depends on how this mission functions. We'll find out in a minute. Let's move... You know, that's fine. Orders confirmed. On the move. And we'll open this door. You can run right through the door, but if you do, it'll make a lot of noise. Let's run up and open it. Let's just leave him there for a minute. Order's confirmed. All the move. Leave him there for a minute. Where do we want to go? You know what? Let's take a bound forward. We don't have a lot of time. Moving. Probably unwise to split up. Mm. Come back to him. Will do. Alright. I don't want to leave him in the open. Confirmed. Let's go here. One drawback of the sniper, just so you know, um, if her first action is not sh not firing the sniper rifle, then she can't fire the sniper rifle that turn. Solid copy. She has to not move, in other words, or reload or anything like that. Although she can still fire her pistol in that circumstance. Which, as you might guess, is less powerful and less accurate. Although more accurate at close range. Moving to designated coordinates. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta cover some serious ground here, so let's keep moving forward. I'm on the move. See what we can see. Although they right. bear some resemblance to the sectoids first encountered during the invasion, their genetic structure now includes human DNA. They are stronger than ever. Even greater psionic potential. Now you see these red squares. 
if we move into any of these red squares, we will be seen. That's what would happen in the very first mission. We just, uh, we didn't know the red square was there before we stepped on it. Come back to him in a second. Not going to spring this attack yet. It's too, uh, we don't have people in position, but we'll get people as close as we can right now. can't waste a lot of time in this firefight because we do have to get in there and destroy that freaking thing. Let's put him on overwatch. Putting him on overwatch means if the enemy moves into your sight range, you'll attack, but you will not break cover to do so. You won't break concealment. If we don't have to attack yet, let's not. That way we can, uh, get working on taking out this other thing first. But, they are in my way, kinda. Hmm. Maybe I will. Let's move out. out. See if we can still see them from here. Scanning. She has a clean line of sight. Let's um get him as close as I can. Maintaining a line of sight. Confirmed. I'm on it. Overwatch. The first person to shoot will break, which means uh, then when the enemy starts to move, we'll all fire. Moving in. You can't see from there, goddammit. Much to my surprise. Scanning. Nonetheless, Overwatch. We haven't got time to linger, so we're going to open fire right here. The one thing she can see is 73% chance to hit. It's dead. Target neutralized. They spotted us. Hopefully that thing moves into my sight range. It didn't. Okay. So they know we're here. We didn't get to ambush them because they didn't move back into my sight range. But let's keep moving towards our, our goal. Probably encounter other things anyway. Yep. Another trooper and another sectoid. The troopers you've seen in action, the sectoids carry laser pistol, or rather plasma pistols. They have mind control techniques which, which can either panic you or or literally take control of you and make you into an enemy. Um, He's the one with the medkits. We can't throw a grenade. So let's open a fire. 54% chance isn't bad. Get it together. Again. Alright, he did not get where I wanted him to get. Uh, she cannot see anything from here. Moving. She can fire a pistol. Her grenade won't reach that far, so might as well. Target still up. Bad ideal here. Not sure if we can see from up there or not, but from down here, there's nowhere else to get him under cover except for here. Uh, all right. Head to that location. Negative nope. damage. This is this, and that sectoid could come out of nowhere. The one we lost track of. I'm on the Forward move. here first to see if you can see it. You can. All right. Oh, I moved closer. Interesting. Now he does have a slash ability. We can charge over to here and attack. We'd have an 88% chance to hit, and it can do up to eight damage. How much? Uh, it has eight health. There's a chance we'd kill it. It's also vulnerable to melee attacks because of just an inherent factor in insectoids. So we may kill it here. Uh, I hope to God we do. Let's go for it. It's our best chance anyway. Nope. Six damage though. Hurt it. Get me out of here! Oh, 
I didn't re mind control him, but he did panic. Well, this might work out in favor. Killed him. <laughs> Thank you for panicking. That's and because he killed the thing that was mind controlling him, his panic got removed. That worked out great. That did not. One shot was enough. To And that could have didn't. The alien transmission is still active and we're running out of time. Get to the relay and take it out. ASAP. I know it's running out of me. We need to get closer to it. This is gonna be a nice flanking shot. There it dropped an item if we can get to it in time. If you look, though, it's got a number three over it. We have three turns up, or it will disappear. A 33% chance to hit that. Can we get close enough? We need to get her in a position where she can start sniping the alien relay. We're running out of time here. I don't have time to pick up that item right now. Will do. Objective fighted. Commander. We have a positive ID on the alien relay. <sighs> Ten four. Her as well. Baby. Oh, she hit it anyway. <laughs> Alright. That might be just enough to charge in and kill the sword if we can hit it. 88% chance. Excellent. That'll release her from panic. Target disabled. So she can snipe that thing right now. Beautiful. Menace one five, we've confirmed destruction of the relay. The alien transmission is down. Eliminate any remaining. There are still aliens to left. Or it would have ended there. Order's confirmed. On the move. Pick up this item. Get a hair trigger. Got some. We can also, I'm not gonna do it, still allow us to pick up that body if we wanted to carry it out for some reason. Um Right now, there's no purpose. He literally has baseline equipment, but if he had better equipment, saving his body, getting it out, would also potentially allow us to uh, rescue any equipment he was carrying. Um, but at the end of this mission, given the type of mission it is, everything left on the map will automatically be picked up by us anyway. Some missions, you, you end up... you finish the mission by escaping, um, so you may not retrieve everything. Let's not move anybody yet. Let's get ready to reload it first. These people are unloaded. Let's get them unloaded. Moving to designated coordinates. Affirmative. Covering now. She's firing with a pistol because she reloaded, which means you can't overwatch with her uh, rifle. Get two troopers. Could run in with, with my sword, which would give me a what? 88% chance. But I don't need to. I can probably just walk up here and kill it casually with my shotgun. Probably 100% chance with the shotgun. Yep. Mission accomplished. All right. Well, once again, we lost one trooper. One troop at the beginning, but it was just a rookie. So it's kind of a callous attitude. But it was, it was just a rookie. It was just a nobody. Didn't even learn his name yet. They are a finite resource, even rookies. 
Even now, our enemy lurks in the shadows, plotting to destroy all we have built, to return us to the chaos of the old world. Only together can we oppose them. United in the Elder's love for us, we shall prevail, no matter the cost. And you see right there, A, that, that gentleman speaking was a speaker. He's a propaganda mouth for the advent. Um, you see a poster that was made at the end of that mission, Angels of Death. We may see that show up on walls later on. You can take your own custom posters if you want to at the end of any mission. But given it automatically creates one out of each one. Memorialize this one as well. No reason other than good form. Immortal in our hearts. Dude whose name I can't remember. Alright, we got some promotions here. Where'd he become? Operating some of our most advanced equipment. Specialists deploy robotic drones on the battlefield that can be outfitted for combat or field medic duty. So for now, the only thing that uh, the Gremlin is good for is Aid Protocol. Command your Gremlin to move to a friendly target. It grants that target a bonus to defense until the start of the next player turn. We can upgrade its usefulness later. Now, given he's not randomly getting assigned a class, he's reached uh, the Corporal level. We can give him one of two traits. We can either give him Phantom. When the squad is revealed, the soldier remains concealed. Or Blade Master. All sword attacks deal plus two extra damage and have plus ten to aim. I think for now, this we're going to go with for him. And that's that. We did find a hair trigger, which during the next turn we can attach to a weapon. It will give us a 5% chance when we take a shot that the shot costs no action for the active turn. We also found two more or four more of these and two sectoid corpses, which you can later research and dissect and find out what makes them tick. No more. Its men have all sworn loyalty to the administration. With one exception. It is good to see you again. In the days since your capture, I have done all I can to aid the resistance from the inside. It was these resistance operatives that provided the intel leading to your recent extraction. As of now, resistance forces are currently somewhat disorganized. If we are to defeat Ad and their alien masters, you must change this before it is too late. What you are seeing are classified reports of missing civilians from across the world. Their numbers are growing. We suspect they have been taken to a nearby Advent black site, though its exact location remains unknown. Time is short, Commander. We need you to take charge of resistance operations throughout the world. Establish contact with the local cells and bring them into the world. This black site and shut it down. Save our world. The clock is ticking. Good luck, Commander. We should also remember to save our game because uh, I don't want it crashing and losing objective. the data. Okay, so we do have some objectives here. We need to research resistance communication, fly to the Black Site region, and meet. We've updated our current objectives based on the most recent findings. Uh, there we got our new engineer. Let's put her to work. Staff on the engineering team, we can start clearing out space for new facilities, Commander. We should keep looking for more. Rope. We'll need them to staff the facilities once they're built. So right now we can put her to use in one of two ways. We can have her the stuff. I'll tell you more about that later. Or we can have her aid in the construction of this, which time it takes. There's two people working on it. So Before Shen and contact, I just the this chick, whose name I can't see because it's covered by our recording bar, Catalina Ramos. From what little we'll work on building this. Like he managed to gain a position we'll have it sooner. We'll probably play one more mission in this um, episode, and then I'll call it quits for a bit. Uh, nothing else we need to do right now. So let's go back to the thing over here. Commander, Geoscape. we have a lead on the alien black site, but we'll have to rely on the to actually get us in. We should contact with their forces in the region as soon as possible. It's the only way we're going to find out what's behind this so-called Avatar project. 
So, we need to fly there and get in there. Do that until this region is not red, it's blue instead. We can't even start doing that until we research resistance communication, so we'll do that soonish. For now, we can't do anything about that. We can either go there and get more rookies or fly back. Guys, we already started this, let's finish Avenger it up. Plotting new course. I think you will find our results have All exceeded right. expectations. So, having completed this, we can now build a nanoscale vest and we can research plated armor. The nanoscale vest is a light armor underlay derived from advent armor. This vest can be worn within, with all XCOM armors to increase soldier health. The thing is, building that, it is an item. In other words, you can't carry a grenade if you're wearing a nanoscale vest. Um, but it's a pretty cool item, so we'll give it to some people. Yeah, I would say resistance communications is the next thing we want to look at. The little uh, symbol next to it means it's actually a, an overall objective. Mission objective. See that work begins immediately. Even if it wasn't, that's what we want to do. I'll contact you when now, I have a full report available. I'm going to build one of those what nanoscale vests. I think now? just we'll have our sniper wearing it because um, odds are she'll never get close enough to throw a grenade anyway. We'll be out of supplies now. Let's do it. 25. Just hand him over to Advent myself. Guerrilla Tactics School now operational. Okay. So new tactical and squad upgrades are now available for purchase. Blah blah blah. Let's go look at it. Here's our Guerrilla Tactics School. Shiny and new. That can be used for one of two things. Let's start with the first one. It's easy. We can train a rookie as a specific class. Let's do that now. Let's train. Uh, train. Let's train rookie Ming Ho. Um. Yes, we want to do that. So for several days, I think it's five days, he'll be out of commission. We can't use him for anything else. But he can train to be whatever class we want, and he'll become a squatty at the end of it. So it's like a free promotion, and a promotion to specifically whatever we choose to make him. I'm going to make him a specialist for now. We can also do this in theory, but nothing yet. Um, these are various things you can take that which, which will, for the rest of the game, benefit you. But you can't do them until you meet certain requirements. In this case, squad size one. It would allow us to take five people into the field instead of four, which would be great. Um, it would cost us 50 supplies, but we have to have a character who's a sergeant, and we don't have that yet. The highest we got is a corporal, so there's nothing we can do with this right now. We do, however, have an engineer ready to go again. Um, we can't build anywhere else because everything else is filled with alien shit. But we can start digging this stuff out. Now, the easiest stuff to dig out is up here. If we dig this out, we would gain 36 supplies. It wouldn't take us that long. This will take longer. We gain supplies and 10 alien alloys. It's a dig longer still. Um, we can't do it yet though until we've dig to it. You can only dig an adjacent place to something you've already uh, dug out. We ultimately though want to get down to these two things. The placement of these two things is random, but um, exposed power coils, if we build a power station, a power relay on that square, it'll give us extra power. Given we've already used uh, 9 out of the 15 power we have available, that's going to be a priority sooner rather than later. So for now let's dig straight down here. Commander, so far I haven't Let's seen use our single engineer to do that. Left over in this area. If we clean this stuff out, we could probably use this space for a new facility. Excavation is on the way, Commander, but it's going to take some time to get all that stuff cleared out. It's going to take 20 days right now. You can see the little extra symbols underneath. The one orange solid symbol is the engineer we have working. The other one indicates if we had another engineer, we could lend that person to, to aid digging this out too, but we don't. So for now, that's that. Nothing else we want to build. We're already doing research. Let's go back to this. Strategic resource located. Right. Beneath the looming statue of an elder, elder being an alien dude, we noticed an overgrown security checkpoint placed at the intersection of two roads. After further inspection, the corpse of a security officer was discovered slumped over the small inside. Our engineers swept the site and recovered a number of useful system components. 56 supplies we got out of that. Now we can either go get those rookies, or we can go get this, uh, which would give us a random special type of grenade and a random special type of ammo. That sounds better to me than rookies Avenger right now. Let's course. go. As you can see, it takes time to even fly there. You are too trusting, John. The skirmishers are advent. Advent is the enemy. The enemy is food. 
Try not to bring that up when we meet, Volk. You? Take their side? After all we've seen these years? Look, I'm not exactly having drinks with them, but they did hold up their end of the bargain. What about you? Wait and see. Volk, out. They might show up. Team Volokov, Volk to his friends. Those are a big part of the reason why you're standing here today. Volk may be a little rough around the edge. He's the real deal. Heads one of three resistance groups operating independently from us that we consider a legitimate threat to Advent. Together, they'd make one hell of a fighting force. Too bad they hate each other. Still, we've made some unlikely progress. Volk's Reapers may have found you, but they weren't acting. They were tipped off by a group of defectors known as the Skirmishers. No one's big on working with these guys, knowing where they came from. But you wouldn't be here without their help. Both the Reapers and the Skirmishers have agreed to suspend hostility, and you serve as the good. Trust doesn't come easy between these two, so we're heading for a nice, quiet spot on neutral ground. Even so, let's not take any chances. Intel on this area is weak, and we're picking up strange chatter on comms. Not to mention we're ending a decade-long blood feud today. I'd advise our soldiers to be fully prepared before we deploy on this one, Commander. Good luck. Okay, a couple of quick things to tell you. The first was... If you've got the manpower to spare. We're all in this together, right? The first has to do with Volk right here, and sort of a trend you're going to see in this game. Um, a lot of the cast from Star Trek The Next Generation um, lent their voices to this game. That's Jonathan Frakes, who played uh, Riker, playing Volk. But there are three others that I'm aware of, three other actors from TNG that are uh, that are in this. Um, I know he said we finished the next mission before he quit, but this next mission, I happen to know, is a really fucking long mission. It is also the only mission in the game that I can think of that is in no way procedurally generated. It's the same guy mission every time. And although it's a very cool mission, and I'm sure it's you know, watch, um, I need to take a brief break before I dive into that, because it's going to be about a 45 minute mission, and I've, I've done it recently, having uh, just had that other game crash. Uh, so I'll quit right as soon as we get past this. Not sure how long our contacts are going to wait for us, Commander, so I'd recommend we proceed as soon as possible. We will. We will. Soldiers are standing by to deploy. I think it's Sunday Booth the Reapers. Um, we'll get a scientist and 69 intel out of this, as well as some other stuff that you don't know about yet, but we'll find that out at the end of the mission. Um, for now, I'm going to save it. I'll be back probably shortly, depending on what my wife has planned for the day. Um, if she needs my assistance with anything, I'm going to be gone for a bit. All right. Yeah, I guess I have no choice but to launch, actually. Back out of this. It literally forces you to do this, so 